Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Thank you for tuning in today. I'll be working on my 2005 Honda Element in this episode, and I kind of have a laundry list of things that I wanna to do to it before I make it mine, so to speak. They don't really seem like things that would fit into individual videos in and of themselves, so I'm just gonna group them all into this video. And those things include the instrument cluster. I have some lights there that are out, so I'm gonna remove the instrument cluster and repair those lights. Also, the center console, there's a few lights out there as well that I'll be addressing. The driver's side seat belt is a bit frayed, so I'm replacing that. I got a uh, one off of eBay. I'm also going to be replacing the driver's side seat belt buckle, which is causing the airbag light to come on. Additionally, when I did the uh, lock rekey, I went through and I changed the, the locks to work with just one key. Well, when I had the door apart, I damaged the door speakers. So I'm going to be replacing those as well as the driver side or the rear driver side door has a, a seal that runs around the outside of it that's torn. I'll be replacing that. Additionally, I'm going to replace the condenser fan, which I found is not operational. That's up under the hood. The hatch struts in the back that hold the rear hatch assembly up, um, those are kind of weak and not fully extending the way they should. I'll be replacing those in this episode. And if I get a chance to get to it, if the parts arrive in time, I'm going to replace the front headlights and also install some fog lights. I've covered both of those things in detail in other videos on the Honda Element, so I wouldn't be necessarily doing that here, just sort of an overview. So if you own a Honda Element, uh, there's a ton of useful information in here for you, or a CRV of roughly the same vintage. Everybody else, watch anyway, because it's fun. It'll be fun. I'm going to start on the inside and work my way out. And what I'm going to start with on the inside is the instrument cluster lights. You can see in this shot that I've got some that are out, particularly where the coolant temp and fuel gauge are. I mean to remove this uh, cover here so I can gain access to the gauge cluster. I'll start by removing this side trim piece. Ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> so it may require a little bit of effort but you do need to get this piece off and that will give us access to this screw. It's nice that these doors open nice and wide so you can get a screwdriver in here. With that screw removed, I can pivot the steering wheel down and give me more room to pull this out, but this piece should pop out now. And that gives us the instrument cluster. It's dirty in there. I'm gonna clean that guy up. With that trim piece removed, you've got screws here, 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 and down here. With those four removed, you can take this guy out. How handy for them to put a tray there. With those out of the way, I should be able to lift this guy up out of here. And there are a couple plugs. There's a little plastic tab that needs to be depressed in order to release it. And there's two. Just using some uh, glass cleaner and a microfiber towel. That looks quite a bit better. If you're doing this and you're going this far, I would recommend replacing all the bulbs just to be on the safe side. I don't know what's behind here. I want to know. Ooh, looks like a way to access maybe the odometer. Anyway, as I said, I think these are all the same. Just give them a little twist and they should come right out. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the black ones, and I believe that's the number for them. Now, not all of these are bad, but I'm replacing all of them. But I'm gonna go back through and test them. The ones that test good, I'll just keep hanging around in case I need a spare bulb. And it's just the reverse of taking them out. Just put them in, give them a little twist. When they stop moving, you're done. They don't have to move that far. All right, now there's just two remaining that are gray. They are a different type, and this is the part number for those. And this is basically the odometer. These don't have a particular direction that they need to go in. Let's plug it in and see if everybody works now. This is not a difficult job in my mind. Well, we got lights that we didn't have before. These were all out, so those are back. One of the odometer lights was out, that's back. One more thing real quick. Sometimes these seem dim and aren't bright enough. So this over here on the left, this thing sticking up is actually 
how you change the brightness and you hold it down. See how all the circles are lit up? That's fully bright. And then as you tap it, those circles go away. So that's how you adjust the brightness of the interior lighting or the instrument lighting, I should call it. One final wipe down. Never gonna have better access. So if you wanna change this outer bezel, which I think Honda offered like a different bling setup for this, you pull this off, but there's one, two, three, four, five, six screws that I believe hold that part on. So be sure to remove those screws and then you can unclip this. And if you wanted to, you could paint this. I think that would look cool as, at least in this car, is flat black. Just put it in position and boom. Quick check to make sure everything still works, and it does. Now this console light replacement I covered in detail in another video, uh, but pretty much just involves removing this piece. Now this one's slightly different because it's a manual transmission, but plastic trim tools are recommended. Come on, you can do it. Ugh. All right, it looks like I'm gonna have to get the shifter off. So on a manual transmission, on the automatic, you don't need to worry about this, but pull down on that collar and you can undo the shift knob. And then, come on, it should. Oh, come out couple of plugs and it's yours and we'll take this over to the bench to replace the bulbs that's cool here are the bulbs for the switches and then the dials for the upper ones looks like they didn't send the one for the hazard switch so I've got all six of these but I don't see this guy which I also wanted and the hazard switch, there's a light down here. I might have one of these, I don't know. I'll find the part number for you and put it in the description. Whenever I have the opportunity, say an instrument cluster is in a car going to a salvage yard, I always like save bulbs whenever possible, including what you just saw me do earlier with the console thing. So that's gonna pay off today. That one looks about bang on. I have one of these has a blue cover on the outside of the bulb. I'm actually gonna remove that. There's like this little bitty blue condom over the top of it. Comes off just like that. There. So the dial bulbs are this part number. Here's a pro tip. Make sure you push in when you're installing these. And the wider the screwdriver or the screwdriver that fits, the inside of the slot the best like this one just about perfectly fits inside of that slot the better because if you use like a smaller one like this pocket screwdriver it'll start to distort it big screwdriver push in and twist and these are the shorter ones and this is the number for them all right this back in it's only one step more to remove the radio if you need to there's four screws on the outside of that pull it out unplug the stuff and you're able to change that out if you so desire oh be a real good idea to plug everything in first what do you think i think that's a good idea that we plug stuff in electrical things don't work as well if they're not plugged in before i give that the final ugh, and turn off the shop lights and check to see if everything's illuminated all right what do we got yeah, everybody's lighting up now. Hazard light lights up. Everybody lights up, all the buttons. So everything is illuminated now. Now we can push it in, lock it into place. There we are. I don't know if Honda ever made a fancy shift knob for the element. Like sometimes they'll offer a leather wrapped option. That part's done. Now I plan to turn my attention to this seat belt and replace it, which is gonna require removing a lot of stuff on this door. 
But I just noticed something pretty interesting. Check this out. But before I get to what I found, let me show you this problem, if you will, that, that's popped up. So you close this driver's door and then you go to close the front door. And I don't know if you saw all that movement. It's really pronounced at the bottom. Check this out. So when you close the door, look, look how it moves. See how both of these just sort of wobbled around? Like this whole thing was just sort of bouncing around. Well, I think I found the cause. And that is right here. Look at that. We got loose screws holding the latch assembly in. So that's gonna allow the latch to move around a lot. So I went and I checked the other side. Not only does this side also have a loose screw, but there's one missing. So I need to address this. After digging through my pile of spare screws, I found this screw, which is a bit short, but I believe it will work. It's better than nothing in there at all. And I'll take this a step further by adding a little bit of blue Loctite to these screws when I reinstall them, and hopefully they won't work loose again. All right, I'll start on the driver's side. Looks like there's some junk in there too. I'll hit that with a little bit of compressed air. But literally these are falling out. A little bit of the blue Loctite. So if you have a Honda Element, and your doors are closing and they're kind of loose. Take a look at these screws and see if there's an issue. I'm gonna wait and tighten them until I've got them all up in there. And I'm using my impact driver for this, although I may not smack it with the hammer, uh, but I can get a good grip on this and get them nice and snug. And I'm using the blue because you can still undo it later. You can with the other ones too, but the blue is medium strength. All right. I'm gonna blow this latch assembly out with a little bit of compressed air. Now let's see how it closes. Ooh, that sounds solid. Hardly moves at all. Way better. Well, I'm still gonna replace that seal because it's bad, but I think that uh, does something. Let's go over to the passenger side and tighten those up as well. Let's see what this does for this side. Nice, solid. This side moves even less than the other side. But it sounds way more solid and I'm happy not to have loose screws on that latch anymore. So check those screws if you've got an element. Here is that code that's causing the SRS light to come on and it's for the driver's side seat belt buckle as I mentioned. I purchased one off of eBay, it really wasn't that expensive um, and I'm going to replace it now. To remove the seat, there's a couple of plastic covers that need to go first. There's one here in the front on both sides here and here. Let's pull off to one side and that should release the plastic clips. And underneath we find appears to be a 14 millimeter fastener. There's one on the other side too. Then you can take the seat, move it forward, and that will give you access to another cover. And you might want to actually tip the seat forward to give you a, a little more room. Then you can remove this plastic cover. Finally. Wow, looks like this could use some cleaning up for sure. But there's two more 14 millimeters here. I'm gonna push the seat back now. I'm not gonna remove it quite yet. All right, before you take the seat out, electrical connections, disconnect them. You've got one SRS connector here, and you just pull back the plastic release, and that one will come out. Try to make this one easier. There. Now, you probably don't have a seat cover like I have here, so you won't have to worry about that so much. Um, I don't need to take it off to remove the seat, but now that the electrical connections are disconnected, now I can remove the seat. With the seat out, just need to remove this cover to gain access to the seat belt. Now, normally you wouldn't have a seat cover. Well, assuming you wouldn't have the seat cover here in the way, I'm just gonna undo this clip and it'll be moved over. There's a little plastic pin back here that needs to be removed. And I believe that's it. I believe the rest is just clipped in there. 
believe this pulls up off this way. So pull it this way. And then, yeah, there's just a little clip here. And then there's another clip under here. The electrical connections to the seatbelt buckle are clipped in under here if you follow the wires up. So you might want to unclip these first. Actually, you can sort of just knock them out off their mounts or you might be able to just push them off the clips, whatever works for you. But once you've got that done, it's just a matter of removing uh, this fastener, 14 millimeter. Now my new seatbelt buckle didn't come with these clips, so I'm gonna try and save them and transfer them over. Hopefully where the clip attaches to the connector, it's not broken. One more place where the harness is attached. Break that out of there. So there, that's unclipped. Looks like there's one more clip up here. Looks like it'll be easier to take these off first. Oh, well that was super effective, but stab my finger, so be careful. Now let's see if they'll come through. There's a height adjustment on this seat that's just this round thing over here that's covered by the seat cover in my case. And I'm gonna crank it up and watch the seatbelt fall out. So I had to crank this up to, to create a little more space for the wires to exit. And that came out easily. Here's the new part. And I noticed an identifying marking right here. There's an L. So that's for the left side, which is the driver's side. So if you get a new part and you're, you're not sure if you have the correct part, it looks like they're marked right and left. Do a little housekeeping. Now I can install the new part. Do not cross thread this. So make sure you start it by hand if you're using impact tools like I am. Otherwise, you could get yourself into trouble. Here's a slot that the rear fits down into. Make sure it goes into that or else it won't go down in there right. Now we just need to put it back together. The important thing when installing this is know that the back hooks back here and it also hooks here. There's really only one actual clip in the front here. I usually start from the back and work my way forward. And there it is, ready to go back in. Before I put the seat back in, this is kind of a great opportunity to do what I want to do in this door, which is replace the seatbelt buckle. Also, I'm going to replace the speaker over here so I can sit in here, have nice access to everything, and then I'll put the seat back in. To get this cover off, the easy way to do it is to squeeze these sides and then pull it back like that. And now you have access to the supper fastener, which we will need to get to. And just like with the front, there's a cover and that will reveal a couple of Phillips head screws that need to be removed. There's also a cover here that needs to be removed to access yet another Phillips head screw. Come back. There's another one in there. And there may also be a few screws under the speaker cover that need to be removed. We're taking the speaker out anyway, so there's these three. Once the speaker's out, I can unplug it. You just squeeze the sides of the plug. That guy's getting replaced anyway. And over on this side, you might see right down in here, there's another screw that's kind of hidden that needs to be removed. This screw is a little shorter than the one for the speakers. And there's this other one that we talked about. And that one I believe is the same length as the one in the back here. We can't forget about these behind the door handle. And you can actually take the door handle off and behind it, there's a clip that holds the actuator rod onto here. Put that out, pull the cable up out of there. And then you can pry the cable and that gives you this. Also, the bottom part of the seat belt down here, there's a cover. Let's sort of peel that away and lift it up and remove this 14 millimeter fastener. That will also give us some access. With all of that removed, I should be able to have this panel. There should be plastic clips holding it in the rest of the way. 
there's no electrical connections or anything on the back. You can just take the whole piece off. And this also gives us access to the seal that we're replacing. So we're, we're covering a lot of ground. One more 14 millimeter fastener up here. Then there's an electrical connection here and you pull up on the white part of the clip on this part. There we are. So pull back on this to release it. And then there's 114 here and 114 here. And the seat belt buckle, or the seat belt is mine. Now, as mentioned, I'm also doing this outer door seal, which goes all the way up and around this entire assembly. And in places there are little plastic pins that need to be pried out in order to get the seal like here and in some places the seal is embedded into the metal like it is up here and you can pry these clips out I believe the new seal comes with new clips but save the old ones just in case. And I'm just using a plastic trim tool to pry these off of here. A couple of other smaller plastic clips along the way. You can break them because the new piece comes with new clips. And there's my old seal. Now the new seal does have a little bit of goo on it up here at the top. And sadly, it uh, got a little out of hand in this. This is an expensive piece and I'm a little disappointed that this happened like this because now I got to clean off this sticky goo but there is an adhesive piece in here that needs to go on. Sort of knows where it wants to go, but I have to get this sticky goo off my hands and off the part. And to do that, I found this works super good. I just put a little bit on a rag like that, wipes off the sticky goo fairly easily. So I'm not going to go all the way down with this part of the seal because I'm going to wait until I put this inner panel back on. But at least this way I won't continuously get dirty putting this together. Which I know I say stay dirty, but when you're trying to install new parts, I want to try to maybe stay a little clean. This fits down in here. You can use a little bit of silicone spray. It can also help with this. Anything that goes into a run channel, try and make sure it seats down in there well. For channels like this, I'm putting the back side in and then sort of slipping the other side in as I go. And then just go back and check to see if it's fitting correctly. Give it a little tug and if everything looks good, Continue on. I think there's another ceiling piece that I need to peel off here. pretty well in there. So make sure you get it into those channels where it needs to clip in. Can now install my new seat belt buckle. The dark fastener goes at the top. The shiny fastener goes on the bottom. Always, always, always start these by hand before you run them down. You don't want to cross thread this.
squeeze in the sides. And it clips in. Still works and we'll wait, wait to reattach this part until we get our lower cover back on. Just need to make sure that we get our door handle. Attach my lower seatbelt. I can pull the cover down over it. You can also remove this center section. Either way, it works. And there's this little piece. It seems to slide up into here and clip. Finish with the door seal. That turned out nicely. Before this goes away completely, I'm gonna save these little plastic nubs and my little pile of things that I save because something like this is super hard to find and really nice to have when you need it. Now I'll get these fasteners back in. I won't be using the three fasteners that used to hold the speaker down, but that helps hold the door on and will probably help keep vibrations down. So before I forget, put the door handle back together and then the two screws. I recommend doing the top one first because to get to the bottom one, you've got to pull the handle. Sounds like everything's still working. Now for the speaker. The speakers I got came with these cool little pigtails. I got them from Crutchfield. I'll link them in the description. They're these kicker, kicker six and a half inch, 100 watt. Basically, I was just looking for a replacement and this is a slight upgrade. Anyway, they came with these connectors that make attaching these super easy so you don't have to do anything to the harness. You just clip that in. And then here's the new speaker. There's a small wire and a big wire. The important thing is to get them the same on everything, but there's a small connector and a big connector on the speaker. So that should be fairly straightforward. There they are. Now, as I said, this just fits in here, but it came with some self-tapping screws. Make sure it's secure and none of these screws are loose because if it flops around it'll buzz. All right, got three more speakers to replace. But first, let's see how that seal works. Yeah. So there's not as much movement as there was in the beginning. There's a little bit, but. I think between tightening those screws down underneath and this new seal, well, it's like a whole new door. We're here and we have plenty of space to work. So why not do this front speaker? This is one of the ones I kind of trashed, but believe me, it didn't take much. I just looked at it wrong. All right, how do these fit up here? Um, also, they go right in. Easy speaker swap. Hopefully a nice upgrade over original. I considered doing the subwoofer for like a second and then I was like, no. I mean, I, I don't think it'll be that difficult if I did. But. I suppose it depends on if these don't seem to have enough base with the current subwoofer. I doubt that's the case. That is really cool. So be very careful when you're doing this like this, because if the screwdriver slips off, it can go straight into the cone and that would probably make you cry. And you don't want to cry. You just want better sound. That was almost too easy. 
All right, well, let's get this driver's seat back in and we'll take care of the speakers on the other side. I did go back in with the shop vac to clean all this up. Don't forget your electrical connections. And always, always, always start everything by hand first. And personally, I like to get them all started and then run them down. There's part that has to go under the seat track. Because it was so nasty under the other side, I just went ahead and removed this seat and it was equally nasty. So I just cleaned that up also. Now let's put some speakers in. <laughs> I really want it. Now just remember, if you ever go to take the door panel off after installing these speakers, that you're gonna have to remove the speaker and then these three fasteners. And for those of you curious, here's the part number for those little pigtails that make speaker installation so much easier. I have a recommendation for you. Rather than just trying to run the self-tapping screws in and hope for the best and hope you don't hurt the cones or anything like that, before you try to run the self-tapping screw in, I recommend drilling a small pilot hole first. So in other words, go into the screw hole where you want the screw to be, drill a small pilot hole. I have a small drill bit here that's smaller than the screw that's going into it. Drill a pilot hole and then run the screw in. The screw will be guided in via the pilot hole. You'll have less chance of damaging the cone of the speaker during the installation. I have one more recommendation while doing this is do them one at a time. So in other words, don't hold the speaker up here, drill four pilot holes and then run the screws in. Drill a pilot hole, run a screw in, hold the speaker up where you want it, drill the pilot hole, run the screw in, and continue your way around. I think that will be a lot safer and more effective uh, when installing speakers like this. Speakers are done. Awesome. I just cleared the uh, SRS light, so that should be gone now. Light has gone away. Yes. Now for the stereo. Through reduced premiums and actual dividends based on the all four speakers are working. So we're so good there. This, this and I did try some music and it does sound like it's a bit more full bodied than it was before. So I am happy with the new speakers. They did work out pretty well and were super easy to install. Now let's deal with these hatch struts. You can see you have to push it up. These are aftermarket struts that I picked up. There is the part number. These aren't that difficult to replace. There's a retaining clip up here that you pop out. So once that retaining clips out, you can pop this off the joint and they're at both ends here and here. And while you do this, you want to hold it up so that it doesn't want to drop down on you. So I'm going to need two hands for this, but you get the gist of what I'm doing with these clips. And once you have it unclipped, you can just literally, they just come right off. And you just take the new one. I got to do is push it on. Okay, that's one side done. Love it. And for good measure, I'll check the seat belt. See if the lead on the dash is out. And it is. Awesome. Do yourself a favor and don't waste an opportunity to keep a good seatbelt. So run it out all the way out as far as you can. Cut it. I know, right? That's pretty cool. And now take the other end 
slide all the bits off it. And this end you can do something similar, just cut the end off. Slide off all the bits you don't need. And look what you got. You got something that you can pull engines with and all kinds of other stuff. This little frayed part doesn't bother me for stuff like that. It's gonna be down towards the end, but this will be an excellent addition to my engine pulling, transmission pulling arsenal. And I didn't say this, but uh, you could also use this to plug into your seatbelt buckle. I roll them up like this for easy storage. I believe I also mentioned that my condenser fan for the, on the radiator is not functioning. And I'm gonna replace that now. I'm gonna start by removing this cover. I believe I can sneak this out of here. It's kind of low profile and I don't believe it's attached at the bottom of the radiator. I think it just uh, sits down in there, but I can remove my overflow hose and get that up out of the way. But there's one fastener here for the overflow and there's two at the top of the fan. And this is the electrical connection right here. I'm gonna soak these with a bit of penetrating oil before I try and remove them. I'm gonna start by getting the overflow out of the way. There's just one fastener that holds it at the top. Hopefully the penetrating oil did its thing. That's one. I was afraid of that happening. Thankfully it's an aftermarket radiator and I do believe I have some of these extra nuts for lack of a better word that I could use. Hoping this will come out now. That gets that out of the way. Which gave me just, just what I needed. Down there is the wire that was clipped in for the AC compressor. The connector was also clipped into the bottom of it, so I had to get both of those out of there. I'm gonna pry out this broken piece and install a new piece very much like this one that I've already installed. And like this one, I went in with a pair of side cutters and just cut out that center section so I could pull it up out of there. <sighs> Finally. This is the part number for the new motor. I'll post it in the description. It does not come with a new blade, so you have to transfer everything over. So here it is, the replacement, and believe me, this came at a price. You can probably already see that I've been uh, soaking it with some penetrating oil to try and deal with it. And somebody's, somebody's already tried, and they failed. And actually, I'll demonstrate to you that this does not work. It doesn't really matter which way you hook it up. So I can apply power and ground to it. I'll switch them around. Nothing. So dead fan. And I determined that just by turning on the air conditioning, this should come on when you turn the air conditioning on. So if your air compressor kicks on, so your AC compressor has to kick on. If the AC compressor does not kick on, this likely won't come on with it. But if your AC compressor kicks on like my did, mine did, and this fan is not moving, this fan is likely not good. And I just unplugged it and ran direct power to it to confirm that. And I think what I'm gonna try is my impact driver to start. Let's see if we can get those out of there. Get the best fitting, fitting bit that I can find. We have other ways of making them talk. This one got mostly saved, so we have an idea of what to replace it with. Gonna have to go in and do a little bit of repair there. Nothing about a washer and a new screw won't fix. Now we're to the fun bits. 
Yeah, I like that better. Impacting, in my view, is the best way to knock them loose. Old fan motor, goodbye. Hello, new fan motor. Think you went in like this? Yes, you went on like this. Yep, anti-seize. Not that I'm hoping to come back here, which is one of the reasons I went for original equipment replacement, which came at a price, I will guarantee you that. You can get a cheaper replacement one. I won't stop you. As it happens, I had a direct replacement and I just went in with a uh, Rolock disc and just cleaned this up to flatten it out. Now, it's really just a matter of lining everybody up. Make sure it's not hitting anything. Works now. Looks like it runs up like this, goes in through there, and clips onto there. The recent experience has taught me that these little overflow tubes can leak. So I'm gonna just put a little hose clamp on here when I install this. Before I put this cover on and try the hood, make sure it closes properly and opens. And it opens. Sweet. Now let's start it up, turn on the AC, see if the fan runs. It works! Last but not least, we can get this cover back on. That's job done. I've got a new toy. It's a fluid extractor. I'll link it in the description, but I think it's ideal for changing the power steering fluid, which is the only fluid I have not replaced in this vehicle thus far. And this, I think it's gonna make it really quick and easy. So you're gonna start by removing the fluid that's already in the reservoir. I'm gonna briefly start the engine or just crank it a little bit and that way I can get the rest of what's in the system. <laughs> this is flipping awesome. Now I'll fill it up, start it up, run it. If it still looks too dark for my taste, I'll suck it out, suck it out again. You know what? I think I will suck it out, but first, I'll turn the wheels lock to lock. This thing is so great. That just literally took me minutes. I dare say I could call that a full power steering fluid flush. This is gonna make changing out engines so many more things easier I can remove all the coolant, all the oil, transmission fluid, whatever I want. Ugh. All right, I'm gonna start it up and check it again. This was so awesome. There was nary a drop spilled. And now I have brand new power steering fluid. And for good measure, I got a set of new factory wiper blades, which means all I'll have to do in the future is swap out the inserts. These are both exactly the same, I believe. Yes, and right there is the part number. And if you're not sure what wiper inserts are, Here's the part number for the rear one, and I'll change it for you right now. So this one's been non-existent for a very long time because there's no blade on it. Like, there's no blade here. Anyway, take the metal parts out. 
There's the rubber, you can discard that. Here's the new rubber with an actual blade on it this time that you put these in. There's little grooves in them. Now it's ready to be installed. This is curved like this because of the metal. Make sure you put them both in, go in the same direction. And I'm putting them in the way they came out with a curve like this. And these are held in by the ends. So make sure it's trapped in there. All better. Check it out. Watson's had an upgrade, or should I call it a facelift? Got rid of those old dingy headlights that were on there. I could have cleaned them up, but I, I kind of like these better. I had these on my other element that I ended up giving to my daughter and I always kind of liked them. I liked the little LED accents, but unlike what I did with my other element and when installing LED bulbs in those, I left these alone with the halogens, which halogens is what the element originally came with. The only difference is, is now I have projector beams, which hopefully I'll be able to see a little better in the dark. But the fog lights will certainly add to that, and I've installed uh, amber LEDs in those, but those are pointed down at the road, so I'm not really worried about those blinding anybody, but those would be really helpful to have in inclement weather. I also took the opportunity to black out the front emblem. I think it looks a little better, gives it a little bit of an attitude. I also plan to black out the rear emblem along with the uh, element uh, emblem that's in the back there, but I'm gonna do that. There's a little bit of rust coming out of the lock around the uh, rear deck lid. Also, there's a clear coat issue across the top of that. I kind of want to address all those things at once, and I also got a spoiler for it. And it's not a race me spoiler or anything like that. Elements actually had a spoiler option from Honda, and that's the style that I got. It's just a little lip off the top there. Be doing a video on that, so look for that in the future at some point. Also, while I had the front bumper and all that stuff off, I took the opportunity to clean the condenser, so hopefully my AC works a little better as a result. So what did the effort of cleaning the condenser and replacing the condenser fan net me? Well, we've got a little over an 80 degree day here and I've got the AC on. Let's see what I get. Well, I'd say it gets me pretty good because I am down, well, <laughs> below 40 degrees. It almost looks like it's 30, 35 and it keeps going down. So I'd say that was worth quite a bit. And FYI, the only thing I did was replace the condenser fan and clean the condenser. I didn't top off the system or anything. Anyway, I'm very happy with the outcome and all the work that I've done, and I hope that it was helpful to you. Uh, I'll put links in the description to additional videos that cover things in detail, like headlight installation, fog light installation, other stuff that you might have questions about, parts, tools, all that stuff in the description, along with a link to airthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you if you have automotive questions. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you had fun. I did. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I'll see you next time.